Today I'm going to be covering Resolve's recommended specs because you guys ask me about them all the time. If you're new to the channel, my name is Garrett Harding and I make DaVinci Resolve tutorials right here on YouTube. Today, we're going to be covering the motherboard, the CPU, the GPU, the RAM, the hard drive, and even the power supply and case that Blackmagic recommends for DaVinci Resolve. And first things first, I should tell you that the document that we have access to that actually tells us these things from Blackmagic is for DaVinci Resolve 15, not DaVinci Resolve 17. So I'm going to be covering some updated options as well that better reflect what it's going to want for DaVinci Resolve 17. And I have their recommendations as well as my recommendations in the description down below for you to go check out if you so choose. Let's go ahead and check what Blackmagic thinks our Windows systems should be running with in order to run DaVinci Resolve properly. First things first, just like I said, the motherboard. Blackmagic is going to recommend that we're using the Asus Prime X299 Deluxe. Now the Asus Prime X299 Deluxe is designed for 7th generation Intel Core X series processors, which is something that we need to be looking at here because the CPU that they also recommend is an Intel X-Series processor. This motherboard also supports multiple graphics cards as well as sporting eight RAM slots. So now onto our CPU. Blackmagic is recommending here that we go with a 10 or 12 core Intel X-Series processor. But since then, the X-Series processors have moved into some areas where they're actually having more than those 12 cores. And while fitting that bill, the Intel Core i9-9980 Extreme Edition boasts 18 cores instead of 12. So while it is a little bit of a bump up in price, you do get significantly better performance out of the i9-9980 Extreme. So next up on their list and also then ours is going to be RAM. Now they say you can go all the way down to 16 gigs of RAM and that might be true if you're doing just like 720p stuff and you're not using any effects or color grading or anything like that. And then they ramp that all the way up to 64 to 128 gigs for Fusion. I currently have 32 gigs of RAM, and if you wanna check how many gigs of RAM you have currently installed, go ahead and come down to your search bar here and then type in about. And the first thing that should come up is about your PC. Go ahead and open that. And then right here we have your device name, your processor, as well as your installed RAM. So if you're down below that 16 gigabyte mark, you probably want to upgrade that RAM because you're gonna have a hard time moving around smoothly inside of Resolve with less than that 16 gigabyte number. I would definitely shoot for one of those higher numbers in the RAM category because the more the merrier in this case. Now it just says generic chassis. So as long as you have ATX, like a regular ATX chassis, you should be good to go. If you're not sure about finding one of those, I've got one linked in the description down below to help you out with that and then other components it's going to say one terabyte ssd hard drive right and normally that's good and if you're getting this motherboard that's going to be good with that motherboard as well but if you're going to get the motherboard that i recommend then you're going to want to be getting an nvme m2 stick and all that's going to do is give you extremely upgraded speeds so i have both of them linked down below now we just have our gigabyte motherboard and this is going to be basically the same specs but on an amd system and if you for some reason have something against intel or you just really like amd this whole document is going to be linked in the description down below as well and you can find this on page 36 of this document they also have recommendations for macs and linux systems as as well as some laptops that they recommend. But you've got to keep in mind for all this that this is for Resolve 15. Now we come to GPU selection. And most of these, even though this is a little bit older, are going to really be fine. I'm editing on an RTX 2080 Super, I believe. And while that does give me pretty good performance a lot of the time, but it does tend to fall behind a little bit when I'm doing high complexity projects because it has a low amount of VRAM. So you'll see on all of these cards that they recommend, the low lowest amount of VRAM that we see right here is 8 on the GeForce GTX 1080. And in this case, that's going to probably outperform my 2080 because my 2080 has 6 gigs of VRAM instead of 8. And even though 8 will do it, you generally want your VRAM to be as high as possible. 
Now, this Quadro GV100 right here is insanely expensive. And if you're a pro, you make a bunch of money doing this, or if you're a company and you make a bunch of money doing this, maybe this one's for you. Or if you just have an extra 10 grand lying around, that might be the one for you. And if you do end up going with that one, you're gonna have stellar performance. It's an amazing card. It's gonna crush everything that you needed to do. So a lot of the time you'll be able to find these super expensive cards like those higher end Quadros or the Titans. But right now, a lot of these 1080s, 1080Ti's, even the 2080s and even the 30 series, they're all bought up right now because of crypto mining. So, I mean, watch where you can uh, and be wary of scams with buying used ones right now. Unfortunately, that's just the situation with GPUs at the moment. Hopefully it'll get better soon. I know NVIDIA is trying to put some things into their new cards that actually make them worse at mining crypto. So hopefully we'll see some more like consumer level cards in the market soon, but right now it's, it's pretty sparse. It can be tough. So those are Blackmagic's recommended specs for DaVinci Resolve 15, as well as some of my recommendations for moving that up to DaVinci Resolve 17. So maybe this exposed some things with your system that you maybe want to upgrade, maybe it didn't, maybe you have a super awesome computer already, but either way, if you enjoyed the content today, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of my tutorials coming out, and feel free after this video to go check out any of my past tutorials. I've got over a hundred of them on the channel, so there's probably something for you there. And until next time, my name is Garrett Harding, and I'll see you on Thursday.